Ready? Even flow. <laughs> Jam for the win. Yes. yes. Of course. Awesome. Every I, day I of the week. I think the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame might might start some litigation with us <laughs> after, after today. Yeah. They Look will. at foundations, bro. Literally, yeah. it's collapsing. We destabilized rock and roll just now. <laughs> Actually, we're doing a documentary on the last grunge band alive. <laughs> 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 Ooh, oh, that's, man. That's kind of sad. Yeah. Um, so out of all the bad karaoke that we've done, that's probably like one of the worst. Um, mm. That's mm. okay. That means that everything is, it's just going to be much better than how we're starting. All up from, all up from here. All, yeah. It can all, only get better. Yes. Things can only get better, as Howard Jones would say. Yes, and that is a fantastic song. And another... Yeah of amazing UK British you know Tom White contribution to uh, pop pop the problem pop. the problem is, is you're not surrounded by keyboards and synthesizers you know you know you've got the guitar but you don't have the actual 80s thing you know I know yeah. I do have a keyboard right here all right so all right yeah we're gonna do 80s 80s, um, what do they call it? New Wave. Oh my god, you sound like some old person who just watched a documentary or something. What do they call that? Oh, it's New Wave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that, like, is that like Joy Division or something? <laughs> what is that? Is that Frankie Goes to Hollywood? Yeah, well, oh you know, gosh, you, you yeah. crazy kids in the 80s? <laughs> See, here's the thing, we gotta get more young people on the show because our asses are like really old. I mean, remember you will remember this. Remember the mods and the punks? The mods and the rockers. The rockers. Well, we had the punks. So punk rock was really big back then. And so didn't the you watch the movie the Quadrophenia? Uh-uh. No, I have. <laughs> what, what kind of what kind of music person are you? You Dude, know, I grew up Korean. Okay. okay, I'm not even going to touch that one. But yes, Quadrophenia, great rock opera by The Who, made a movie and it showed the mods and the rockers. Some uh, guys were the mod. They were riding little scooters with flags on the back. The, that the might have been the first, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that may have been the first time you saw Sting starring in a movie as an actor was in Quadrophenia, actually. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Sounds yeah. very obscure. <laughs> yeah. You know, that, it almost sounds like it's sponsored by Aquafina, and there was lots of product placement in that movie. But I don't really <laughs> You're such a smart ass, dude. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. what's big in the IoT other than other than Rob Tiffany getting squashed in the parking lot and having to? go to the back of his car in order to to yeah get to his car get to the driver's seat <laughs> well, what the is that all about I, i'll i'll start i'll get let me derail this really quick because uh, in, in the words in the words of a uh, family guy um you know that uh, mr griffin this is is grinding my gears uh, mm. so i was talking to so you know now in uh in sacramento for the last couple of days there is a, a wine and grape symposium so you have a lot of uh you know folks in the in the wine industry as the name uh, suggests and i was talking to a few folks there because when every time i keep hearing about um any sort of a autonomous operation via vehicle tractor conveyor belt uh combine whatever for you know the farm 
you know, no one, I, I don't hear enough people talking about this thing being deployed at a farm in the middle of nowhere. It's like we talk about, yeah, there's these vehicles and they do this and automation and benefits and all these things and all like everything that you could do. And then a little bit of like, well, and you sprinkle, you know, private wireless, you know, CBRS, LT, like all these things. And at the part where someone has to talk about the backhaul for that private wireless in that farm, that's 172 miles from the next person living no one says no one says a word and i've been and i was you know i i reached out to uh you know to vico hey you know have you know have you you know have you heard anything differently and uh so i wanted to you know start there because we know that wireless is not wireless we've talked here in iot coffee talk many many times about the 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 digital divide of you know lack of any sort of access you know in, yeah. in farms and, and rural communities and and i wanted to you know maybe someone will listen to this and come in and you know and tell us what it is that we're missing or what is that you know the magical dust because i couldn't find a single oem of private wireless that has anything on a farm just not one not one and i went from the all rent guys to the kid makers yeah. to the louder guys to the installers like nothing you know what i find go to point to point right because uh -huh. i can <laughs> i can do a shot from that you know that hill over there um yeah. i found a few whispers but you know that's doing mostly you know like wow. FW. but anyway nothing that would tell me how an autonomous vehicle it, if it needs connectivity is going to work in a farm and yes Obviously, yeah. these these vehicles will have telemetry, and they're smart, and they can do many things, you know, in a in a defined geographic space. But at the end of the day, if that data is going to be analyzed, it has to get out of the farm somehow. So, so why? you need you why? Need my gears, people. Yeah, but why? you need to ride wireless technology, right, with capacity and latency for that, with like proper latency characteristics. So so let's chat about that because so again we, we grab um so we will have the limits of physics right you know so if we go cbrs it's 150 megahertz but we probably only get half because someone already bought the rest but you know you can do a big chunk of things with with 60 70 megahertz because yes. remember we're talking about farms there's very little competition here and, right. and no one is doing I, I don't know a hundred tractors in a, in, a, in a little piece of land. It might be a handful of vehicles. Uh, so I think the from a spe from a capacity bandwidth latency, if the network existed, I think it could deliver autonomous operation. But how the hell do we get backhaul out there? Like that. That's that. That's uh, what I keep com coming back it, to. It, it, it's like that company um, out of uh, Ice and Provence in France. Uh, it's a university project. They their startup. They create. They create a little robot that goes and scopes out pipes for cracks. Right, and it's fully autonomous. And the only time that it connects ever is when it comes back from a mission. And you pull the telemetry data and the and any data off of it using Wi-Fi, uh, but you know what I'm saying? It, you don't need. I mean, uh, here's here's the dilemma for the wireless world when it comes to solutions. You it, just pull the data off of it when it yeah done. like that <laughs> yeah. But the dilemma is that the, you know we can have very autonomous, intelligent systems that are self-propelling, self-operating. Uh, for simple functions, right? Like going through a pipe is not all that big of a deal. And, you know, quite frankly, you, you, we make a big deal out of autonomous tractors, but I mean, you're not going down like a street in Mumbai <laughs> where there's a high risk of killing somebody uh, every two feet, right? Uh, it's not like that. Uh, so, you know, I think we we have to we have to be um, mindful that of what autonomous means and what autonomous, uh, you know, I, 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 how they so, will be architected and what the role wireless will play. And it may be zero. 
That's the sad part. Well, it cannot be so two, two things. So no, no, there, there are no, you know, there's no, uh, there's less of a safety element. If I have, you know, an autonomous rig in a farm doing whatever it is, you know, fertilizing, picking things up, planting, but you still need this thing to, in order for the, no one's buying tech for the sake of buying tech. And at the end of the day, if this vehicle, this tractor is not autonomously performing the labor that has displaced that human and put them in, you know, in another job being more productive, then it doesn't, it, it's not going to work. Sorry, I thought it was the earthquake of the week uh, here in the oh, Bay Area. Wow. But yeah. I think that the dryer just went off the rack. Or see, it's an old dryer. Oh, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, okay, I'm going to go man. take a look at it, guys. It should not be rattling this much. I will be right back, hopefully. Okay. All right. All right. But I guess you need the pre you know the ROI of precision agriculture. That's what we're what, talking about here. What right? was what was his we we talked around a lot of stuff there. What was his actual question though? Like, how do you get backhaul out to these uh, these fields so that you have autonomous solutions? And so he, he says, cool. yeah, we put CBRS up. Oh, backhaul and having like, having, like, a reliable connectivity mm -hmm. um, all around, you know, for wherever it is. And I would say, though, like, out where I live, the WISPAs are doing really well. Yeah. Um, if, if there is a use case where they're going to make money, they will put up an antenna and set everything up. And yeah. you could have complete activity. Now, I'm not familiar with them in terms of anything that's live and out there on the mm -hmm. farm. And they're, you know, they're like set up and deployed for backhaul. Because right now, it's really more about rural, um, personal, you know, broadband. Broadband, um, wireless. Yeah, but oh, I have think? some books. Yeah. I might want to, you know, I might actually reach out to them on David's behalf to see if they're seeing anything. Because, you know, Oh, Texas is a great use case because there's a lot of stuff happening out this way. I was thinking WISP the whole time, too. Can we have the IoT Coffee Talk WISP Corporation? <laughs> we, we, we got your, we've got your your backhaul. We've got two Dixie Cups. And oh, we my got God. Your backhaul out of that. But David, <laughs> so, David, when you went away, we were trying to remember what exactly was your question. Yeah. I don't know if you what the hell your question was. The, no, Can no, you the, guys hear the, me? Yeah, yes. yeah, we can. <laughs> okay, I just noticed that a couple of you were talking over me, so and my my uh, no. mic was giving me errors. It's called, it's called the interwebs. Oh, is that okay? Yeah. No, my mic was giving me yeah, errors. Sure. So that's why I thought you can't hear anything I'm saying. Um, so, David, my point earlier with uh, you know you talk about backhaul, right? We you got to have wireless backhaul there. <laughs> And this, you know, yeah. the technologies we're talking about for reaching people, those are the technologies we're talking about for backhaul as well. And you're also talking complex precision agriculture. So what is the ROI for precision agriculture? That's why I would be looking at um, to see what can be done. So, yes. So let's let's do uh, back of the paper napkin thing. So first, again, now Rob Rob's, Rob's the farmer. And, you know, whatever it's, he's planting, he's weeding and, you know, his back is hurting because he had to, you know, insert himself in a vehicle through all sorts of wrong ways. So now he cannot work. He needs the autonomous tractor to do yeah. his job. Uh, I don't have a hat, but my kids left this here. So let's just go. Okay. With it. Um, <laughs> the, so we have. The cost of the vehicle that's going to, or the, let's call it the robot that's replacing Rob. And there's going to be an ROI, you know, going to invest this much. And if I get this output, you know, my ROI is in X. Um, no one's going to sell you an autonomous tractor with some sort of, without some sort of a service contract for the maintenance, for the data that, you know, because you're getting all this value. So there's that. Uh, we're assuming that we're going to have to build a private network because there's no other way to connect. And this is where things get hairy. Rob's a farmer. You have the autonomous vehicle people and they are product people and they know a little bit about ag, but no one knows about networking. So let's go get someone else. And we read through the interwebs that, you know, there's all these OEMs and all these SIs. Okay. I got the SI, someone's going to build it, someone's going to maintain it. And so when we get into the whole ROI thing, 
it's a big leap from saying I farmer by this autonomous thing and I'm off to the races versus my farm is in the middle of nowhere. I have to build infrastructure. Who's going to help me? And how do I now calculate whether there is an ROI in the first place or this is just stupid? And and right. that's the point where not enough people are saying it. Like so much you say, look, Farmer John, you're screwed. This is not coming for you. This is not going to work. It's going to be satellite based and you'll get what it gets. But all this AI laser sapping, sharks shooting lasers, it's not going to work. Uh, and that's it. Like we should just say it. Sorry, I uh, had a little bit too much coffee this morning. No, thank you for all that information. And I, I, you know, these are things we all deal with. And you're right, there's that expensive point to point for every little thing is one way to go. Or you create an envelope a network in that area, but then that whole network needs to connect to to the real world. I like the idea of the IoT Coffee Talk WISP Backhaul Corporation um because all you have to do is go on amazon and buy all this ubiquity oh, yeah. gear and because you know surely within eight miles or so 10 miles there's got to be real connectivity somewhere and so we we backhaul we, we do wisp which is cheap and beam it into the middle and then there's this giant thing and it's just kind of like um kind of like in uh independence day you know, when it shoots the laser beam down on top of the first interstate bank in L.A., they're like, choo, choo, choo. so we do that. The wisp beams that down and then blasts it out over the farm. Boom. IP networking for the win. There we go. <laughs> Done. Hey, David, I'll um, suggest to you another contact person who, you know, used to work with us in high tech and is now a farmer in Washington State. Awesome. Hey, so, on you too. Right on there with Rob. We'll go see. We'll go see this contact. Yeah. The answers are on YouTube, David. Uh, Everything <laughs> you ever need yeah. to know. Seriously, I'm actually not joking. We can start our own auto repair shop with YouTube if we had to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Uh, and, and because the answers are on YouTube, the 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 good folks that are out there spreading the amazing things that you can do with private wireless should maybe use some of these YouTube links to complete yes. the thing. That's yeah. that's what I'm trying to get to. Tell well, you know how well, that's do I what, I remember going down a rabbit hole <laughs> the first time Vico was talking to me about ubiquity and wisps and stuff and going to that conference in Colorado with our our buddy Mountain Connect and it's every the he- president of the WISP group is there and everything I'm like what the hell is this oh go on YouTube and there's like a million videos on how to just get going yourself and it's not expensive so i think we start the w- w- backhaul farm backhaul corporation yeah on helium hey so oh. <laughs> we're we're a, we're a global we're a global show right international or nationwide. Any of this crap even resonate with you? Because you know, one of the things I noticed flying over the uh, the UK is you guys have literally like torn down all of the forests, and you know, you guys have a lot of farmland, and uh, you don't uh, probably don't have the density issues that we uh, lack of density issues that we have. But I mean, does any of this stuff resonate with what you guys are seeing in the UK, which is another innovative telco? wireless nation of sorts um i think we have different problems to be honest with you right um we obviously really? we're a lot yeah well we're a lot smaller um yeah. sometimes our time to market can be quite quicker because of the fact that we're smaller um but i think in terms of uh general kind of wisp um kind of procedures and things that we've got going on and what you talk about um we don't have the scale right because our farms are a lot yeah. smaller um uh, i mean you I, I think you could fit the uk inside like texas twice right or something ridiculous yeah. so i think uh, you could fit it in wisconsin <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah i to be honest I, I i don't i don't have a lot of like case studies i haven't really spoken to many people about that so it's not really an issue that we tend to have um or that has come up really Leonard, to be honest with you yeah, no, I'm just really interested in what it's like in other 
um, other regions that have different situations than we have in the U.S. You know, um, mm. you know I mean, I mean, the U.S. is a huge country, right? So maybe there's similarities between the challenges we have here connecting agriculture with what you, there may be in, let's say, Brazil or Argentina or mm. whatever. Well, we, we've still got issues of rural uh, kind of Wi-Fi, to be honest with you, let alone everything Wi-Fi. Else. Yeah, I mean, quite a lot. Quite a lot of people don't even have uh, internet yeah. uh, c- capabilities uh, in the UK outside of the main cities. Five G only works inside the main cities, so um, yeah. some some of our infrastructure That's is true. quite advanced. It's quite advanced, and some of it's actually not at all. It's quite it's quite backwards, yeah. really. Um, so uh, yeah, I think uh, in answer to your question. Um, uh, yeah, some of our challenges are, are different, um, just on a different scale, right? Well, really we're going to fix it. Is there anything between London and Manchester? Is there anything in the middle? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, no, nothing really to kind of talk about. Oh, to be well, honest. Um, and that's uh, right. That's <laughs> I, anyone listen? Anyone listen to this? It's in Birmingham or any other city. He's probably going to be really upset with me. But, yeah. Um, I, Man- I, I, Manchester, I, I, Manchester, I secretly called London 2.0. So, um, ah. yeah. There's, there's, yeah, there's, there's not a lot there, really. Uh, well, so, I just uh, started this company. I'm calling it US Robotics, and we're going to be <laughs> able to let people with just their copper phone lines connect to the internet with this little box, <laughs> and it makes some weird sounds. <laughs> you know, what a coincidence! I just yesterday I started a a, a resale and salvage of parts for 56k modems from uh, you know mid 90s machines. Yeah. We might, we might, we might be an ecosystem. You and I, Rob. You know what? You get scrappy when you're in the boat that David and I are in. You know, I, and Andrea. I'm going gonna... to tell my wife that all of those serial cables that I still have here, they they are now worth some money. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Along. <laughs> um, whatever happened to the PUCs? You know, building out their networks to uh, provide broadband over power lines. I we've talked about that one before, and we were like, "What happened with all that research?" Uh, remember, it was like it was like all those power lines going to every da- last house on every farm and ranch. Why are we not using that? And maybe I don't it didn't know. Work. It, it was probably you know like Itron and Honeywell and Census, and they probably just went. We just won the meter reads. Research <laughs> has been completed. We're good to go, folks. What were you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really excited I think about Steve, 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 Steve. Uh, they are offering it out here in Bandera, the Bandera Public Utility Commission. Um, they um, will advertise, but when you look at the footprint, it's still in the town, right? Not the city, because it's a small town. It's only available to those in the town. So, yeah, it, um, it, it, I don't think the economies of scale are out there, so they're not going to build out. Same kind of issue with. Um, AT&T not building out to the ranches is they don't have enough people in business, so they're not going to build it out. Fiber. Dude, you're like, Steve, yeah. you look like an angel, man. I am. I, I, I am an angel. Like, freaking, you know that? Yeah, freaking backlight. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I'm at, my, I'm at my mommy's house, so uh, I'm in a different environment. So you are an angel. Definitely, I I am. Yeah, yeah. It's it's my yeah. I am. My 88 year old mother is listening into these conversations, going, "What the hell is he talking about?" <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I have two things. One, if I can make another million dollars on CDPD, David, I'm your guy. Okay, so I got a I got a boatload of that shit in my pocket somewhere. Number two is. Is Rob, did you go to the John Deere booth at CES? Yes. And did you did you talk to them about how they're getting the autonomous data? No, I didn't talk to them about that. No. What the hell's autonomous data? <laughs> well, autonomous vehicle data. Sorry. Oh, okay. Um, it's <laughs> it, it, CBRS um, is what they're right. doing on the farms, right? But yeah. But so I said to him, I said, so you, so let me get this, John Deere. You're laying fiber from the farms back to a fiber hub, right? Um, no, no, we're not doing that. Well, then how the hell are you getting this data back? 
and they didn't really have a lot of answers. Well, let me tell you, Steve, with a CDPD modem that runs on an (laughs) AMP system, that blazing at 19 19 kilobits, folks. (laughs) Let's go, baby. On a good day. Hey, listen, I was doing 3270 over CDPD. Uh, Let's go, baby. I can uh, still do it. And and for you kids out there, that is circuit data. <laughs> Look it up, folks. You know, does anybody still have their original compact iPack pocket PC with the backpack <laughs> sled thing? And then you can put the CDPD <laughs> modem in there with the antenna. That's right. The little air card. I'm, boom. Smartphone. Air code. Man, I wanted one of those so bad. I was too poor. Yeah. That was, that was <laughs> awesome. That was awesome. You know what? Why don't we seriously? I know we just talk a good game here, but we're pretty smart people and can do stuff. We we I, we can solve these backhaul things for farms, and we know how to do it twenty different ways. Yeah, we just need to productize. We need to write stuff on a piece of paper and and make it happen. None of this is rocket science. Well, you I know? mean, I think a lot of it has to do with edge computing, right? So if we can just do uh, a model, oh, let me take a I'm shot. Out. No. <laughs> take a shot. I'll just take a shot of this, I guess. Is that okay? It, oh, yeah. I mean, oh, your eyeballs. Your totally, eyeballs. It burns. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you're totally right, Steve. I was just, uh, you know, and this is like uh, an example of, I mean, it, you know, when you have folks who are comms people, wireless, they tend to think for some reason that everything has to go to the cloud. And if it can't get to the cloud, then it's impossible. And it's like, the wrong way of thinking about stuff. And I think it, this is, you know, we've all become victims of this indoctrination of cloud everything, which is, it's just not going to be that way. Um, there's so many reasons why, but for more than a decade, we've, we've just had it pounded in our heads. You know, all workloads are going to go to a hyperscale cloud. And what I mean by, you know, and, the, and then people, of course, get, cloud native technology is confused with cloud and uh, you know it's a mess but i think that's the big big problem here is the mindset but honestly we're here it's in the way of the solution but first people were told to build their private clouds right and what has what that has been about yeah so so <laughs> if we think about midwest farmers row croppers and you look from above, from satellite, and you see how you see circles everywhere in the middle of the country. And those things are these pivot irrigation deals. Yeah. We will use the same thinking with our pivot wisp deal. <laughs> Stay with me here. Stay with me. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I guarantee you. I'm making this up, but I guarantee you <laughs> that for sure, within five, if not ten miles from every farm, there is some place where we can get real internet. Whether it's the house that the farmer lives in, or the packing house, or the storage facilities after harvest, I guarantee you for sure within ten miles. And so, what we do is we we will have a logo that almost looks like the pivot sprinkler thingies. And we'll beam with okay. right into the we'll beam with into the middle of that deal uh, for that backhaul, and then we'll create an IP network envelope with other technologies to cover that whole thing. And it could be CBRS and something like that, or it could be something <laughs> I'm else. I'm going to sign up. I'm going to okay, sign up. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the pivot bundle, right? The pivot bundle, yes. <laughs> Yeah, is it a, is it a exactly. triple is it a triple play bundle? It's a triple play <laughs> pivot bundle. Yeah, and let's not get ourselves banned here from. Oh, never mind. But yeah, that, that, so, that could work. Look, no, you know this this stuff. I mean, seriously, the I I watch the YouTube videos. I can get the stuff on Amazon today, and I can create a pivot thing. For my neighbor, we can do this. We can do this. And so the, the, all we have to do is connect oh, the dots. Where's the real internet? We use that. Oh, we build our little... Leonard's getting, Leonard's getting bored. I'll, I'll create the logo and the website. Let's go. Okay. And then <laughs> and then we put it with antenna, antenna in the middle of the farm. You know, it comes over there. And then, um, and then we have a lot of options on how we connect to that central thing that's blanketing the farm. 
I'm still going for the uh, balloons. No, Rob, I'm I'm serious. I, I will be. Um, you know, we can split the country because you know this takes a lot of surveys and a lot of boots on the ground. I'll be that guy. I'll go out there. Let me go find out. my boots. Yes. Hang on. Let's, yeah. Let's just roll. <laughs> no, we're gonna do. We're gonna do this. This because you know what? This is part of the deal because we've talked so much about solving all these issues for agriculture. But there is critical infrastructure, no doubt, that really has to be in place in many first yeah. to make it real. Because um, the way I've done it, point to point from everything is too expensive, right? Um, or you're doing Laura to cellular backhaul mm-hmm. point to point. Um, but yeah, you know, we could, we got this. We got, we got this. this. And, and, and Bill, you joined like, you know, 13 seconds too late. Uh, and we, since you're here, advertising for your company uh, while you're at it. Tell us what happened to Powerline Carrier and the promise of broadband. Well, I mean, to be honest, Powerline Carrier, I mean, it still exists. As long as you have a plug or an outlet in your house, Powerline still exists. It's that's where you use it. I mean, you want you want you want easy repeaters? Hop in a power line. Ethernet ports are available. Whole shot. It's just a clunky way to do things. You, you remember all that research? My like 8K Netflix via power line carrier. Doesn't it work? Uh, it, that's not even a thing. <laughs> <laughs> but, there, but, but, but Bill, do you remember back in the 90s, a lot of research was done on Ethernet over all the giant transmission lines all over the country? There were then, companies founded on that. Well, what yeah. happened? They were going after the energy, the energy uh, industry, right? I mean, there were literally BPL was one. BPL, <laughs> BPL that's what it is. Right? <laughs> I'm just curious what happened to the research. Did, what, is there too much weirdness or interference? Do Ethernet over power lines? It, it's hugely noisy, right? I okay. mean, first off, if you look at it, if you look at any given power line from the distribution substation all the way down to a singular lateral, and you look at the noise that's sitting on a line, the sags and swells, right? For those that don't know, sags are when you have dips in power, swells are when you have a rise in power that are existent on any given power line is ridiculous. So, so I mean, you, you want to talk about buffering? <laughs> That's what I was going to ask. Is it like satellite, though? You know, satellite, you, it's great download, but uploading, it's extremely like, you know, DSL. Or it's oh, it's, like, worse um, than, it's worse than yeah. it's worse than satellite. Uh, yeah, worse than okay. satellite. I'm just yeah. glad that Bill um, translated to us what sag and swell means, because I thought he was body shaming me. But <laughs> yeah, no, not at all. <laughs> It's not not oh, at all. Yeah. All right, thanks. Man. I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, not to, your, that, not to your face. <laughs> since that tech didn't, since that Bill, since that tech didn't work, what if you did the? Do they ever think? Well, could we just have heavily shielded Ethernet cable just kind of lying next to the power lines and doing it that way instead of trying to beam it through the power lines themselves? You know, they, they, they tried a bunch of stuff, right? They tried inductive coupling. They tried uh, they tried to run shielded cable, but there's there's just no way. I mean, there's you can't provide enough shielding for that. Okay, all right. I think I saw a movie late one night called Inductive Coupling. I don't know what it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, yes. It, it was. It was like it was. It was on right after Indecent Proposal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. And right before he switched over to the porn channel. Oh my god, he had to go there. I, I, oh, I have to. I had to do that. Larry. I know. Because it wasn't too obvious. Right. <laughs> well, okay. So, could you you so if we're outside on a farm and we've already got a, a wisp providing an IP network? blanket if you will how do we re all right so you know it's one and then you got your big pole here in the middle of the farm and so it's getting connectivity from as far as 10 miles away and now it needs to beam what is it beaming stephanie what is what what do you beam is it just wi-fi or what is that it, from, what, like you you're a receiver of wisp love oh okay um 
you got to have point to point from the antenna to the router. Your router, you have Wi Fi, you have your Wi Fi set up, and your Wi Fi is how you get connectivity. Now, out in the farm, I don't know, we, do we have industrial equipment that is waterproof, windproof, you know, dustproof. I think in West yeah. Texas, like windproof, all My of the pet proof. 68. Yeah, but it also, yeah. It, you know, but I mean, <laughs> we're doing a we're doing a ton of a ton of lower wan on these farms, Rob. I mean, because the cost is so low on the sensors, on the soil and pest control sensors that are there. So, you know, some I have a company that we've been working with that makes this combo box for the middle of a farm that's got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Zigbee, lower wan. 4G LTE, all in this roaming box. So when you talk about your sprinkler rotations things, think about the in the middle of that rotation box is a communication hub that is also circling and putting. Steve doesn't, um, Steve, doesn't Cradle Point have some of those that it, essentially you can plug and play and satellite? It's everything. It, Right. Yeah, they do. This, the, a lot of them, they don't have the satellite stuff. They they have everything else in it. Yeah. But there's some third-party companies that have done it. because. But the satellite still is so limited. I mean, the data the data throughputs are so low. I mean, it's just hard to do it. If you were going to do a couple of sensors, I get it. But it's it's not a really good viable backhaul solution at all. But I think, I think, Rob, I think you have to have something that's, that's CBRS. Really, what you're talking about is a bridge network. Right. Yes. I mean, so yeah. you're gonna you're gonna take that CBRS from where it's being dropped off from whatever WISP it is. It, the, the the bigger part about it is understanding are you going 30 dBm or one watt from that point down with what capacity or throughput? So it's it's really an exercise of what what are you doing? And then to Steve's point, I mean, when you're talking about these multifunction boxes that actually carry multiple transports and everything. The only thing that has always concerned me about that is the number of antennas that you need to support it. Yeah. And, and exactly. where is the real estate to actually mount all of that? Yeah. That's why, that's why so many of them, Bill, have done stick to 900. Right. Yeah. So, right. So if it is the Wi Fi and the LoRaWAN, they, they're, they're not getting the interference. It's, just, it's when they start to add other things into it. But the other thing, too, on the point to point stuff, I mean, I know that it's, you know, we're talking sometimes microwave type of thing. And Rob, I'm going to go back to what you said. The farmers' co ops have become the wisps of the farmers because those guys are wanting to make a new stream of recurring revenue. And mm. so on those top of the silos and the grain storage tanks, they are putting microwave dishes up there in order to get out to these farms. The problem is, is the cost. If the, if you have a family farm, they ain't paying for this, but if it's a corporate farm, then they're willing to absorb the costs of that backhaul and doing it. But that's it. But it's a big, there's a big dish, a, a difference between that corporate and that family farm and the, uh, and the budget money that they have. Yeah, that's yeah. true. You're right. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm still, I, I, the whole single box, multiple transport thing. There was a, there was a company who remained nameless um, that did that. And it was a big giant box and it had like, four antenna omnidirectional antenna coming from it and they were advertising this and i know some of you already know who i'm talking about and i they called it one name i called it the fur bearing milk pig <laughs> <laughs> because it feels to me like the engineers that were building it were like hey you know we're gonna make we're gonna make a pig oh, oh like, oh, but it's gotta have it's gotta have hair on it and, and by the way, I mean, I want, I want it to be very furry, and I want to be able to milk it. Bill, you don't. Uh, Bill, how's your marketing background? Good. Can, oh you, can, you, bring, can you bring that to market? That's awesome. <laughs> that's <laughs> a little lipstick. <laughs> uh, fur bearing milk. Fur bearing milk pig. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my God. You know what? How many how many people are gonna listen to this going, these guys are freaking nuts? <laughs> actually, you know what? Actually, this is a really, really good uh, it's a good episode, and I don't think we've ever had nine people on before. Oh my god. Oh no. <laughs> I love it. 
See, this you know is what, what I love. love. We have represent. We have we have our diversity representation, right? <laughs> and then we have our international representation. We just need like you know the young kids to beat up on. So anyone exactly. who's young out there, like Mark. you know, younger than forty, this is come on, come on the show and get beat up. <laughs> this is the Brady Bunch of IoT coffee yeah, shop this is, right this here. Is, yeah, uh, you were right. <laughs> hey, Marsha, Marsha, <laughs> Marsha, Marsha. Yeah, where's Alice? <laughs> hey, what's up, Mark? Hey, how are you? Sorry for being super super late. Yeah, that's all right. They have my new. I'm I'm Arm Ambassador, so I got my. Oh, oh what does that say? Nice. What does that say? Well, the yeah, developer nice. program. Okay. Oh, oh cool. Awesome. We love I, developer program. IoT stars, man. What's happening? Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah we are ready to rock. Yeah, I, I, I'm really? gonna share later some. Yeah, uh, the schedule with you, but yeah, it's it looks fantastic. That's awesome. Oh, looking That's forward. That's awesome, man. We need more women, actually. This is yeah. a. Yeah, we try to mention to everyone like, hey, uh, we know, please bring I, a woman on stage. Not um, I couldn't make it. I couldn't make this trip work with my schedule and my kids' schedule, so it's hard. You gotta have to make it work, Andrea. You gotta come too. <laughs> yeah. You just gotta. Hey, listen, eight hundred bucks for a flight on Aer Lingus through Dublin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't exist that. anymore. Yeah, yeah. 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 Air, Air what? <laughs> hey, hey, it. it is a it is a real name. It is yeah. a real name. It is a brand of Irish airline. Please, please. Wow. This is gonna be that episode, huh? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Really is. The tagline we is all, like we were all in X rated. That's just the problem with us. Yeah. <laughs> You'll leave us. That's right over there with inductive coupling. Inductive <laughs> coupling. <laughs> oh my god. There's a lot of that going on in Lingus flights. Yeah. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> hey, come on, guys. Stephanie's driving. She has to concentrate. No, I'm, I'm, I'm parked. I'm parked. Okay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Andrea, you got to come to Barca. Yeah. No, not this year. We need our women women to represent. Come on. You know, it's not like we just want all this to be like a dude fest. I mean... We try. Year, we try to be inclusive. Year, yeah, no, I would have had to plan it. it. Huh? I would have had to plan it better a long time uh, ago. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, to all you guys out there who think that we're just a bunch of dudes, you know, trying to make this like, you know, uh, the, what was it? The, the what, 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 what's that? The good fellas of IoT. It's not true. We, we try to, we try to bring the ladies in. Come on. We we're not a bunch of programmers, yeah, I promise. Like, and we're all down with ESG, bro. <laughs> Especially with the yeah. S part, which everyone ignores you know me. and pretends that yeah. they do. Yeah. Case, the ESG is for missing. young people. Rob just said we're not yeah. a bunch of programmers. <laughs> <laughs> we ha we have personalities. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Gosh, absolutely. The stereotype. <laughs> Wow, well, we're, we're gonna, but we're gonna provide critical infrastructure now for farms, for yes. ter terminals, you know, tank farms, oil and gas business that are out there. We're gonna go do the whole thing. <clears throat> um, we're we're gonna compete with Elon and his Starlink. Well, we'll use or we'll use the Starlink. You know, well, actually, <laughs> well, no, I mean, actually, that's a good idea, right? I mean, yes. you should use that piece just purely for the connectivity piece. Yeah. Screw the router, replace it, put it in bridge mode, replace the router with something else that's going to allow you to actually shape the delivery of the traffic. Yeah. And you're good to go. Partner yeah, up on Deer. I've had I've had so many conversations with Starlink about putting more things inside the box and they want nothing to do with it. So it still will be a daisy yeah. chain scenario. They have no no desire to be in the IoT space. I have Ad no. <laughs> but but I mean, but look Why? at look at what they were trying to the, the problem they were trying to solve was how easy is it to get connected? And I, I have to give it to them. They made yeah. that they made that a uh, point and click, 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 finds its own satellite, and you're up and running. No 
technology savvy mindset is needed at all. And it's and it's and right now everybody at Viasat, Direct Ditch are scared to death of them. And they should be. And they should be. You know why? Because there's been no innovation. Correct. A dish is a dish is a dish. It doesn't do squat. That's right. Is is that is that why Delta uh, Wi Fi is free now from uh, the (laughs) good? That's why, it's, that's why it's why I just, I just want to know I just want to know why if it's on Boingo or something like that if you're paying for it why are they not pouring that into innovation because it's opex That's a good point Oh yeah I agree yeah, with it's, that. It's, it's like it's Bill. Also, also Bill that the senior leadership they do need that third <laughs> vacation home by the water <laughs> oh. uh, we, we, we have we peasants we need to understand this, okay? Please. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the mere pauper could not, oh. cannot afford to do that on their own, so you fund it for somebody else. There you go. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> We're here to help those yeah. people. Those <laughs> well, people. Bill, you know, it's no, but jokes, uh, sarcasm aside, um, that would, you know, the day that a new entrant for airline-based, uh, you know, ground-to-air Wi-Fi comes in. Talk about a big uh, brownfield, uh, you know, lift and replace F. I think that's going to be one of those things like, hey, I've got, you know, 15 years left on this plane. Don't talk to me because it's just it's just not going to happen. The cost to put it down, to sw- like, it's just, no go away and we'll do a deal for the next gen. Oh, but wait, I got to talk to Airbus or Boeing or, uh, you know, that, that salt or whatever, you know, boom by DA. Um, and we'll, you know, we'll give you a deal in 20 years at this rate. I mean, do you, do you think that, that uh, Starlink has a direct line to, to that? Once they get enough coverage, it's game over. He'll just tweet. Click here to sign up, Delta and America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, right. No, no, you're right. It's just like taking us back to the important thing, Independence Day. Checkmate. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. They're gonna they're gonna use our own satellites against us. Yeah. And so we are gonna use those satellites anyway. See, then, Elon just gave that whole industry the pint of blood technique. <laughs> yes. quarter, blood, yes. quarter blood technique. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. You hit technology in the gut and out drops a quarter blood. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah. You know, what's yeah. interesting, speaking of Starlink, and it, it, it got press early on, but nobody talks about it anymore. What a game changer it was and has continued to be with Elon deciding to give connectivity to Ukraine. Ukraine. Yeah. What and how a, fast it was happening. Yeah. What a game changer in, in warfare and battlefield infrastructure. And, you know, you've got the Russians taking out power stations and connectivity. And then Elon says f you to the russians i'm turning on these satellites suck it you know well, yeah, yeah. Uh, apparently um we're send uh, the u.s is sending 31 uh m1 tanks over there and hopefully they're connected and they can be coordinated and iot tanks and do some some serious damage yeah iot tanks exactly. this might be though this is interesting when you think about historically this might be the first time a single human being was wealthy enough to make a difference in a war, you know, by delivering technology, you know, of some kind to one side or the other. That um, we know of, at least. Yeah, yeah. No, he made it well, uh, it's, it's kind, he made it's it well known. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's pretty interesting stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. if you, and if you guys ever want to come to the beach, to my house, we can walk outside to the beach and watch every Starlink launch <laughs> and landing. Uh, it's freaking unbelievable. I'm I'm going to be very disappointed when no more launches are there. I see it, Rob. I see it. You come. I mean, it's just it's just an incredible sight. I still feel like a little kid watching those 
first stages come down and land on the ground and and in per, right on the X. It's it, the, these kids are unbelievable. It's really incredible when you yeah, think every about time it. Time you're just sitting there going, "Thunderbirds are go." <laughs> <laughs> You know, for some reason, I don't say that, but that's okay. I get it. <laughs> or you were having flashbacks to watching episodes of UFO, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Exactly. I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, Steve, whatever, ha- whatever happened to the guys that were making the, the single-use rockets that for the last, you know, 60 years of the space program, we were just used like, ah, it's going to crash and blow up. We'll make another one. What happened to those guys? Well, they're still around in Cocoa Beach and, and Merritt Island. I mean, there's uh, there's a couple of companies, uh, Via, and a couple of ones that are doing that still. I mean, literally, you can walk in those warehouses, and David, they have like three rockets being built in a warehouse on the floor. And those are single-use guys, but it's still, you know, millions of dollars for a single-use um, rocket for satellites. Um, yeah. Crazy. Crazy. And the fun. Right. I have to beam myself out of here. Me too. Okay. To go to All another right. meeting. Yeah. All right. So hey, um, uh, hey, to our IoT Coffee Talk friends, thanks for tuning in and hanging out with us thus far. With the uh, Brady Bunch. Week, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Mark, you and Tom didn't say enough, so you guys set the agenda for next week. You know that <laughs> that is your penalty <laughs> payment there. You cannot be quiet on the show. That's totally wrong. And Andrea, you too. You're getting really close to hitting that penalty. We'll talk about that more. Yeah. So, so actually, actually, it's it's the um, IoT Solution World Congress in Barcelona. Oh, really? That's right this right, week. That's right. right. But I'm going to be there. To awesome. Talk okay. To the but that could be the agenda IoT. then. It's coffee for people. You can tell us. You can tell us how it was next week. Or is okay. I will try to go and cry here. Like. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Adios, so, muchachos. yeah All right. take you, care Bye. remember Bye. subscribe www.iotcoffeetalk.com we're out <laughs> <laughs>